Okay, so a company is making a product, and the number of items produced is given by this equation on a certain day. So if you were to plug in like t equals 2, um, maybe this should say on. I'm not sure what the right word is. Produced. No, I think add is the correct word. So if you plug in t equals 2, the equation is supposed to spit out the number of items produced on that day. If you plug in t equals 7, it's supposed to plug in the number of items produced on day 7. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, and they define what these values are. L is the maximum value. T sub 0 is the value of the sigmoid midpoint. So we're looking at potentially a function that looks something like this. Okay, that would be the sigmoid midpoint. So that's what that word means. L, I think that word makes sense, right? That's the maximum value. That's, uh, that's where we start reaching max capacity. That's how high we can really go on the y-axis. We actually don't ever reach it. We get infinitely close to it, never reach it. Those are just some numbers we're going to have to plug in. Um, and they say the company plans on eventually manufacturing no more than 2,000 products a day. Um, so that means L is the maximum they're looking for. So our function is going to have 2,000 up here. Got that exponential constant. We're not, we don't know K. That's something we're going to have to solve for. And then T. Um, T is a variable that depends on what day you're talking about. For this particular problem, they want us to spend, uh, they want us to put in 20 in for T, 20 in for the days, and then that will equal 100 products. Okay, so on day 20, then they have 100 products produced, which is what this term is. And the last part, T sub 0, that's the sigmoid midpoint, which is 50, they say. Okay, so once we've plugged in all the information they gave us, it should look something like this. Now we have one variable, so we have something to solve for. And that variable is right, right now in the denominator of a fraction. So we'd want to multiply both sides by 1 plus e to the negative k times 20 minus 50, right? Times the entire denominator. That makes this cancel out. But we do the same thing to both sides. So I'll distribute that 100 while I'm at it. We're going to have 100 plus 100e to the negative k power times 20. Out oh, here, and we can just do that too, right? 20 minus 50, that's negative 30. So negative 30 times negative k, that's positive 30k. That made our lives a little simpler there. So we got rid of the denominator. And we're still trying to solve for k, so let's subtract that 100 from both sides. So that's 1,900 now. Then we're still trying to get e, we're trying to get k by itself, so let's get the exponent by itself. So we'll divide that 100, because right now it's multiplying the, um, the e. Divide 100 from both sides. So that's 19. And then to finish getting k by itself, we want to take a natural log of both sides. And so natural log of something base e, those cancel out. That's why we chose natural log instead of common log. And then one last step to get e by itself, we've got to divide both sides by 30, right? So natural log 19 in my calculator. And I'm going to divide that by 30. There's our E, 0 0.098, blah, 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 a bunch of stuff. Oh, I'm sorry, I think I said there's our E. E is the exponential constant. There's K, 0 0.0981. So that's what we've got to do for part one. And then for part two, it says using this model now that we... Now that we know what L is, now, we, now that we know what K is, um, T is going to be a variable in this next step. But T sub 0 is still the sigmoid midpoint. So we're supposed to find out uh, the amount of items produced after 40 days of production. So you want to take the production equation and you want to calculate all the different uh, items we've produced, not just on day 0, day 1, day 2. You could do that as a discrete function, but since we're in a calculus class, we'll find the integral from 0 to 40. That will tell us the number of items we've produced. Um, L, the top part, we said is 2,000. That's their limit. We 
and we solve for k. k turned out to be negative. Uh, sorry, k is not negative. k is, but there's a negative sign in the formula. So negative 0 0.0981. Then t is our variable. We're subtracting that by the sigmoid midpoint, which is 50 for my problem. We'll integrate with respect to t. Okay, because remember what this function is telling us. They're telling us how many items produced on day zero, day one, day two, day three. So if we want to know the total of items produced at day 40, which means including all those previous days, uh, you'd either have to dis do it discreetly by calculating day zero plus day one plus day two, or we could assume it's continuous and use calculus, which is what I'm asking us to do since it's a calculus course. Okay. Um, so it's not the easiest integral. Let me see what we can do um, to evaluate this integral. What's the easiest way? So I'll pause the video for a second. Okay, I think the best way to do this is to first clean up the denominator. Um, yeah. I'm going to distribute that negative 0 0.0981. Oh, and actually, I, let me say this first. Um, so this is for a business calculus class. Uh, for a normal calculus class, I guess I'd expect to be able to do this integration that I'm about to do. Um, but you're welcome to punch this in. You can Google search an integral calculator. You might just have to replace T with X and then just make sure your limits of integration are zero to 40. So there's a couple of those out there. The Wolfram one should be able to do it. Um, so that's okay with me if you wanna do it that way. Um, if you're a student that's looking to do it the more analytical way, keep following along with me. So I distributed the negative, the negative 0 0.0981. Uh, and then the next thing I'm going to do is these two things are being added. So again, for I think for most students in this class, you shouldn't be attempting this part. Uh, Google search an integral calculator. Uh, probably use the one that says Wolfram. You know, just need to carefully type all this in with parentheses. Like the way I'd type mine in would look like this. 2,000 divided by parentheses for the denominator, 1 plus e to the power of, and then you need another set of parentheses for the entire power. There's 0 0.0981, and then I'm going to do x minus 50 to make sure the integral calculator works. You really got to watch your parentheses. I got three open parentheses, three closed parentheses, and everything looks good there. So that's how I'd type that in. Um, go ahead and follow along if you're looking to do this um, the math nerdy way. <laughs> Look, so this part can be expanded a little bit. And uh, this is a good trick if you're going on in mathematics. You'll see this quite a few times when you're dealing with exponential functions. So look how I rewrote this one up here. This is all to the power on, uh, on top of a power of e. Uh, if you multiply two things with the same base, the powers add. So it would be 4.905 plus this stuff right now, the way I wrote it. Right? So it's the same thing. And then what we want to do is we want to multiply the numerator and the denominator by e to the negative 0 0.0981 t power. That way we don't have a negative exponent in the denominator. So there's our numerator because I'm multiplying the numerator and the denominator. So when I multiply the denominator, it would have to distribute and multiply here. Now we don't have a negative exponent in the denominator. We still have this e point e to the power of 0 0.4905 in the denominator. Um, okay, and so now I think we're ready for... A u substitution. Because if we let u be the entire denominator, the z e to the 0 0.0981 t power plus e to the 4.905 power, then du is going to be a derivative of this with respect to t. It's going to be 0 0.0981 
because of the chain rule. We almost have that in the numerator, right? And then the derivative of this is zero because it's just a constant. On the numerator, we've got our du almost. We've got that 2,000. So let's factor out that 2,000. And then we need to have 0 0.0981 as a coefficient here. That way we have du. So you want to divide this by 0 0.0981. So let's do that constant so I don't forget about it. 2000 divided by 0 0.0981. This is now the constant out front. I'll just round off. And we're still, haven't done the integral yet. Uh, but now we have this is du in our numerator, and this is u, so we fully substituted it. We got our du and we've got our u. And so the antiderivative of 1 over u, you might remember, is natural log. So it's natural log u. Um, but then we want to have things in terms of t again. Now that we're done the antiderivative, we can put it back in terms of t. This is natural log all this stuff. E to the 0 0.0981. T power plus e to the 4.905 power. You see why I said you can use a calculator. Huh? Now we're in evaluating the integral from 0 to 40. So let's see what happens when we plug in 40. It's all in natural log. Um, 40 times 0 0.0981. And we're, raised, we're putting it on top of a power of e. Okay, that's the result. And then we want to add that to this other power of e, e to the power of 4.905. To our previous result. And then we got to take a natural log. So this is the first part. And we plug in 40, and we want to subtract what happens when we plug in 0 e to the 0 power is 1, so this is going to be 1 plus e to the 4.905 power, the natural log. Almost done. So now we just have to subtract those two things. And then multiply that times our coefficient out front. So I got 6,340, about 6,341 items have been manufactured, okay, using calculus. Uh, I'll show you how to type this in the online calculator, too. I just Google search Wolfram Integral Calculator, and then this is where you type in the function just like I did. Yours will be different, right? Um, did I keep it? No. Okay, so... Okay, sorry. So, um, you want to start by deleting whatever you see there, and then we don't want an indefinite integral. We want a definite integral from 0 to 40 in terms of x. That's so 2,000 divided by 1 plus e to the negative 0 0.0981 power, and then I'm going to use x instead of 50. But I think Wolfram would work if you replace both those x's with p. Let's see if we can do it. Wolfram can do anything. So there we go. That's approximately what I got, right? But I just rounded um, 6,340. No, that's about, that's almost the same thing, just off because of my rounding. Okay, so Wolfram is quicker. Uh, because of, because this is a business math class, I think it's okay to just use the Wolfram calculator.